Good morning guys, today we are on the family boat and we're going to be fishing out of our home inlet of Hillsborough Inlet. We are currently headed to the field dock. We like to joke around a lot saying that our Suzuki gets such good fuel efficiency that it likes to make fuel because we rarely go to the field dock, but we're gonna fill up and then head offshore so hopefully we can catch some fish. I will see you guys out there. Well, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is very, very windy out here. We just pulled up to our spot. We got the chum in the water. And the hope here is that we're gonna get some speedos to the chum slick and that's what we wanna use for live bait today. We actually have a west wind today, which where we are means that the wind is blowing offshore. So it's pretty calm close to the beaches, but if we were to go offshore, let's say if we wanted to go dolphin fishing or short sword fishing or something like that, it's gonna get real choppy offshore, but in close here, it's really windy, but it's not that rough. It's just a little choppy because the land is kind of blocking the wind and it doesn't have that time to build up yet. Well, we spent about an hour with a chum bag in the water trying to catch the speedos and we could see them, but they were staying really deep. I don't know if because the boat was rocking around so much, if they were kind of nervous to come close to the boat because sometimes we'll get them right up to the boat and they'll be eating right out of the chum bag, which was not the case today, unfortunately. Victor did catch two on the sabiki though, as well as two bar jacks. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna troll back towards Hillsboro Inlet. On the way there, we're gonna troll some crappie jigs over the reef, hoping that we pick up a blue runner on the way so then we can have some more bait because right now we only got four and that could either last you all day or it could last you only a few minutes. So it would be nicer to have some more baits in the live well before we went on to fishing. All right, so I had just set this in the rod holder like two minutes ago. We got something. It could be a little bull of bonita. Tighten the drag a little here. We put us in neutral, Vic. It's always interesting just fishing with Victor and I when we're trying to film and fish and drive the boat, but we're doing it. Um, a little bullet bonita? Should we just put it out, Vic? Well, then you're done bait fishing. That's the problem. It is a bullet bonita. Yeah, you can. I can get it ready. Towards the pompano? Yep. So the main thing with this is getting them hooked up as fast as possible because these guys do not live in a live well. And we want to get them out and be nice and lively to slow troll behind the boat. So, this is our rig right here. We got one single hook. Usually this is not the hook you hook them with, but that's just so that Bonita can swim freely. And then we got three treble hooks. One of them is actually sliding. So we're gonna go one treble hook there, and one treble hook like right there. So you got three chances. Woo. Oh, we got a lively one, Brooke. So that's not bad. If we could do that all day where we go inside and we catch one bullet bonita, and then we have kind of three or four backup baits in the well, because you, ideally we want to troll these two baits at all times. That way, if one of them gets hit and you're in a school of fish and one of them misses it, you have another one on another opportunity to get a bite. The good thing about catching speedos and blue runners is you can put them in the live well and you can get maybe a dozen and then start fishing. The thing about catching those bull bonita is they do not live in the live well like Vic said. So if you catch one, you just gotta fish right then and there even though we're only in 40 feet, which is not really where I would like to be, but we gotta start right where we catch it. So now I'm gonna start heading kind of deeper to, towards deeper water. Can you guys see the sky? How dark it is behind us? I didn't really think it was supposed to rain today when I looked up the weather, so hopefully that stays inshore and doesn't come offshore because I did bring a rain jacket. I'm always prepared, but Victor didn't. So <laughs> that would be kind of sad if it does rain on us. Here's our second bait, which Brooke was trying to show you guys how we catch these, but unfortunately they did not want to cooperate. We're going to hook them up the same way we did the Bonita. Single hook in the nose. One treble hook and then your second sliding treble hook and in the water we go. Now Burke's gonna put the boat in gear and uh, we're gonna have our Speedo out real far and our Bonita real close. And you guys see this bait fish 
is nicknamed the Speedo appropriately. These guys are just little rockets in the water. So while we're waiting on something to hopefully eat our baits, Victor and I are gonna eat some lunch. I made some wraps for us today and we're both gonna mix up an element, which is today's video sponsor. Replenish those electrolytes and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about it at home where it's not so windy and rough and crazy. So see you at home. Element is an electrolyte drink mixed with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. That means no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, and no fillers. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency without all the added junk. I live a pretty active lifestyle and I've always been prone to dehydration headaches, but not anymore since implementing Element into my life. So whether I'm on the boat all day, going to the gym, or even hitting the slopes, I can always count on Element to help me feel my best. So if you guys are interested in trying out Element, right now they're offering you a free sample pack with any purchase. This is a great way to try all eight of their delicious flavors. So if you're interested, you can go to drinkelement.com slash brookchrist, or you can go to the link in the video description to get this offer. Now let's get back out on the boat, mix up an Element, and hopefully catch some dinner. Well, I'm going to mix up orange, and Victor is going to have the citrus salt, which is kind of like a lime flavor. Shake it all up. I just mixed it with plain water. Ah, delicious. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, I'm just not sleeping, baby. Nervous? You're in neutral. That's the Speedo. I don't know. Did you see the rod bend over? Yeah. That was way more than the Speedo had done all day. I think I just feel the Speedo now. I may have jumped the gun, but I just want something to happen here. And that rod bent over more than I had seen it bend over all day. Okay, baby, we are on. I saw whatever that was come up top and eat it. We'll see. Maybe a kingfish? Whatever it is, feels kind of small. It's King shaking fish. its head a lot. Kingfish. Oh! <laughs> he saw the boat and he was like, nope. Not ready to come in just yet. He's kind of just been swimming towards me. He hasn't really been fighting. Going this way now. Yep. He's not too big, but he's a good eater. He's the perfect size eating fish right there. Okay, you ready? Here's the guy. Well, with this wind and only trolling in idle speed, we didn't cover much ground, but we made it out to 80 feet, and that's where we got hit. So it's good to know a good depth that maybe we're going to hang out in from now on. This was on the Speedo. The Bonita didn't get touched yet. Just trying to be gentle. Don't want to lose our only fish of the day so far. Come on, baby, come on. Coming in, Vic, coming in hot. He's hooked bad. Or maybe he's hooked good? Oh no, hold on, hold on. I, he's small. Okay, here we go. Oh, goodness gracious, he scared me there, Vic. Yeah, I scared myself too. He's Almost. only hooked with one treble hook. No, he's... Oh, wow, yeah. Look at his jaws deformed. See that? Oh, yeah. His bottom lip is deformed. Okay. Open up, You buddy. want longer pliers? Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Well, this is kind of what I was thinking we were going to catch today, doing what we were doing. Either this or possibly a sailfish, but look at those teeth. They got some gnarly teeth. You always want to be careful when you, these are in the boat that they don't get close to your toes. Victor scared me there for a second. He was filming and trying to gaff. And to be honest, when you're gaffing fish that are slightly smaller, 
you don't have that big of a target. <laughs> so we'll let you, we'll let that one slide, Vic. But we got him in the boat. So Victor was saying his top jaw was deformed. Look at his nose. It's got like a dent on it. You see that? Mm -hmm. What we meant by this being a good eater size is you can eat a giant kingfish, but when they get bigger, the meat gets a little more mushier. So it's not as easy to do a lot of different things with. We usually just smoke the big ones and make fish dip out of it. But this is the perfect size to do anything with. A lot of people put their noses up to kingfish, but I think they're delicious. We got plenty of ice for our one kingfish here. Going in. Nice. We ran a little further south and we're gonna do the crappie jig, put the crappie jigs out again. Gonna troll these until hopefully we catch another bull of banana. Then we'll do the same thing again. One bull of banana out and then we'll put our last speedo that we have out. It's probably good there. We got one out long, one out short. Well, we trolled the crappie jigs for a while and we didn't catch anything. So we're just gonna go ahead and put out our last speedo as well as one of the bar jacks that Victor caught earlier. I was just about to say that it had gotten a little bit calmer and the wind had died down a little bit, but here's the wind again. <laughs> you just can't get away from it. All right, Mickey. All right, first bait's out, getting the second bait out. I don't think a fish is going to care. I think a kingfish will eat this equally as well. got both those baits out and now we're just gonna keep slow trolling every once in a while put it in neutral just let them have a little break from getting yanked across the water and then go back to just just in idle you don't want to go any faster than that we just ran over a bunch of stuff oh it's getting popped on the surface did you turn the gopro on i don't know did you turn the gopro on or no yes, I did. Let him eat it. Oh, the other bait's getting super nervous too. We just had two fighter jets flow by, fly by. Got him, Brooke? I think so. Are you sure you have him? I dropped it back. It looks like he dropped it. Oh, no, it's there. Oh, yeah. bait. I got cut. Ah. I saw something come up and eat this bait on the surface. Hopefully the GoPro picked it up so you guys can maybe see what it was. I couldn't really tell what it was but completely cut off. So something toothy. But we only have one bait left. That was on the jack. That was just on the jack and we have one jack left but it's like probably half the size of that last one. So Vic is getting another wire rig ready. Yeah, and the ocean has done a lot of different things today, but it finally calmed down for us. Look at this. It's turning out to be a beautiful day. Yeah, we have gone through a lot of different uh, weather conditions today. It went from being really rough to looking like it was gonna pour on us to kind of clearing up. And it actually drizzled on us for a while. And now it's like no wind and it's flattening out, but I know tonight it's gonna pick up because we got a cold front coming in. So today was our last chance to get out on the water for at least a few days because we got that cold front and it's going to be blowing and the ocean's going to get rough again. We're going to put out our last bait of the day. So time to turn that off. You better say a little prayer for this bait. Bless him every way which you can, every which way you can because he's our last, our last shot next to that speedo in the water. It was easy to catch. Come on, last bait. Come on, turn us into something good. So this guy's only gonna get two hooks because he's not that big. He's got that there. beautiful line yeah. on him. Isn't he cool looking? Very. I'm doing one of these, and I'm doing one of these, 
I'm doing one of these. I'm doing everything I can. That's a lot of things. But most of all, I want to be doing one of these. I'm just having a good day out here with you. Me too. It's just the two of us. No cameraman, no parents, no friends, just me and Brookie. Just and the, ocean. the two of us. I sometimes enjoy it just being the two of us when it's like a really rough day because sometimes I just like feel bad for other people like you brought them out here and it's just like a cruddy day yeah like especially like my parents I'm always like oh why did it have to be so rough like I feel bad but when it's a beautiful day then I'm like I feel bad that there's not more people with us so this morning yep. it was like kind of a cruddy day so I was happy it was just the two of us but then when oh, it yeah. gets calm it's like nice to enjoy it with more people when it's like a nice day yep. Well, well, it's that time of the day to reel the lines in. We tried. We tried very hard. We trolled all day, but we only caught that one fish, and we had that one blow up. At least we got dinner, and that was the mission today. I told my dad when I left the house this morning, he asked what I was planning on fishing for today, and I said, whatever is biting. <laughs> what happened? He got chewed by little stuff. That wasn't even a real fish. He got attacked by trigger fish. Well, that's sad. No teeth Let's see the other side. No mm. teeth marks. Okay. So time to run in and clean up our kingfish and wash the boat. tried putting the boat on the lift it is way too low tide to get the boat on so we're gonna flay the fish first wash it then put it on the lift but let's get to it I'm going to use one of my favorite Dexter knives which is the seven inch flexible fillet knife start with a cut from the head like this and just go down Man, did you just sharpen your knives or something? That blade is gliding beautifully. Beautifully right through the bones. You sharpened my knife so sharp, Vic, that I got it on the wrong side of the spine already. Really? Well, that's okay, because we can fix it. You see that, guys? I cut through to the other side. They don't have like a really strong bone structure, so it's easy to just kind of like get through the bones without you even realizing it. Voila, look at that. So we always poke our fish eyes before we throw it in so that the fish doesn't float. Sometimes the gases build up and they get held in the eyes. So if you don't do that, it can float. And I don't think anything is in the stomach. Look how small their stomach is. That's their stomach right there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it goes in there a little further. Like he's got some big eyes wanting to eat that Speedo for a stomach that's that small. Going for his last swim. And you never want to get fresh water on your fillets. So if you're going to rinse off your fillet table, push the stuff out of the way, move it off the fillet table. Always just want to keep things as clean as possible and avoid the fresh water on the fillets. Kingfish have really thin skin, so they're kind of hard to um, skin. So I think I'm going to cut this before I try skinning it. I'm just trying to judge what size pieces I kind of want. So I'm going to cut it right there so we can skin it separate at two separate times because any kind of fish that has thin skin and doesn't have like those hard rough scales it makes it more difficult to skin because you have more of a chance of going through see I even left a little bit 
but they got really thin skin because they don't really have hard scales like let's say a snapper. But you can go back in and fix your mistake. And honestly, you could eat that skin and it would be perfectly fine as well. But if it bothers you, go ahead and cut it off. So there's your beautiful skinless kingfish. All right, we're gonna finish skinning this all up, wash the boat, and then I will see you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So it's actually the next day and I'm going to be cooking lunch. The whole family's about to head over here, so let's get to it. Got my kingfish all portioned out and we're going to pan sear our kingfish. The funny thing is it actually got a little grayer in color while it was in the fridge last night. So if you look at it, it kind of looks a little more gray than it was when it was on the filet table. But we're gonna hit these with some salt. Some of them look like they got more pink. And then pepper. Then garlic powder. And then the last thing, onion powder. So this is that entire fish. And I already know that my whole family can easily eat this thing just today for lunch. Now I'm gonna flip and do the same thing on the other side. So what we're doing with the kingfish today is we're going to be making sandwiches and I'm going to make a roasted pepper spread to put on our bun. So in this container we have two garlic cloves and then some basil leaves. And here is the roasted pepper. You can roast pepper on your own in the oven and you take the skin off once it's cooked or you could just cheat and buy it in the jar like this from the store. Next, we're going in with some Duke's mayo. I want you guys to comment down below, what's your favorite mayonnaise? <laughs> There's always a debate. Some people like Duke's, some people don't like Duke's. Now we're going in with some olive oil. Now for the fun part, gotta mix it together. Oh yeah, baby. Beautiful. Now we're gonna taste it. I didn't add any salt in there because I wanted to try it first. Mmm. Ooh, it's good. You wanna try it, Vic? Mmm, the basil in there is delectable. Uh... I'm not adding any salt. It's really good the way it is. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and as soon as the pan's hot, we're gonna start cooking. So we have two pans that are nice and hot because this isn't all gonna fit in one, but we wanna cook them all at the same time, so. Here we go. Hopefully it's gonna cook them all at the same time. People always say not to crowd your pan when cooking, but when you're cooking for a big family, you want everything done at the same time. Yeah, gotta make an exception. Look at that, got everything to fit. No excuses need to be made for a, a fresh kingfish sandwich, I could tell you that. It was uh, fresh, it was delicious. Um, my neighbor across the canal, who's a great friend of mine, we talk about everything. He, I think he did it just to annoy me. Brooke and Victor come back and Victor's carrying one small kingfish down the dock, probably about a six pounder, which fed us all. 
So it was, was a successful day, you know, gave us all fresh lunch. But he has to shout out, Slime Ball, nickname for a kingfish. He's this fussy guy, like, I can only eat wahoo and I can only eat dolphin. And I shut him down. I'm like, man, don't even call that fish a slime ball. And he also had to add, you could smoke it. It wasn't a smoker king. It was a beautiful eating kingfish. And I told him, I said, man, as long as you eat that fish fresh, it's gonna be delicious. And I was right. It was delicious. Good job, bro. I love a good fish sandwich. I think that might be, between that and just fried fish, it's just so hard to like pass up. I mean, as many like amazing meals that we have here that are like five star quality, I still like will always love like a fish sandwich and it was excellent. Everything went together perfectly. It was textbook, perfect fish sandwich. Well done, Brooke. Thank you. I love being invited to my favorite restaurant, Brooks in Victor's Kitchen. Um, sandwich was delicious. I loved it. Sauce was awesome. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> you can't beat it. Fresh fish, good ingredients, cooked just to perfection. Yep, the uh, best spot for lunch around. Well, Vicki, you have anything to say about the sandwich? I loved it. I told Brooke it looks like it's gonna be the best fish sandwich of my life. Now I'm gonna say it, it was the best one, but it was definitely up there. That roasted red pepper sauce, the kingfish, and like Brian said, turning your nose up to kingfish is like turning your nose up to just a delicious fresh Florida fish, which is just stupid, and you guys should never do it. So big props to you, Brooke. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was the best fish sandwich ever either, but that roasted red pepper sauce like really made the sandwich. So regardless of what kind of fish you have, obviously you've seen that some people think kingfish is a trash fish, and we all thought the sandwich was delicious, so you could make that sandwich with that red roasted red pepper sauce and put it on any kind of fish. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.